All right, this morning we're going to learn how to find unused jobs on one or more servers. And I'm not going to go through it in this video as far as step by step. Um, but as a general rule, for instance, my computer has SQL Server Express, so there is no job server in SQL Server Express. And I cannot test this script in this uh, computer, but I have tested it this past week because we were looking, um, we're upgrading our servers. And so I looked through, I think it was 200 to about 225 servers. And uh, each of those servers on average have about 70 jobs. So this script works very effectively as far as finding unused jobs. What you'll notice about unused jobs, if you go through the, I believe it's sys job history table in MSDB, is that the last run date looks very strange. And what I mean by that is it's not something that, if it's never been run, it's not something that looks normal. Now that may just be in our environments, but I would you'll, you'll find a way to identify it. So in this script basically covers the way that, I, uh, that we can identify it in our environment. So let's look at this PowerShell script. It's a function. You're gonna pass in uh, the server and instance. So this is where calling the function, and this is what basically you could just copy and paste. So we have the function find and use jobs, object server, um, new object. Uh, basically, we're declaring the SMO object here, and we're passing in the name of the server. We're saying for each job in the server, job server dot jobs, we're getting the year, we're putting the year to string, we're measuring the length of the year. If it's less than four, then we're writing the name of the job. And that's because, of course, in our environment, uh, that's when we know that uh, it's not a valid or it's never been run. So. Why is that a big deal? And by the way, this is you know your quick answer here. So if you're just looking for the quick answer, there you go. So why is it a big deal? Well, I'll kind of give you a, a related analogy. Uh, my dad, about I'd say about 20 years ago, he bought a bunch of medical equipment. He has never used this medical equipment. He has a barn full of it. I mean, a huge barn full of medical equipment. But uh, he just has it around. And when I ask him, I'm like, Dad, why do you why do you have all this medical equipment? He's like, well, one of these days, I'm going to use it. And one of these days translates to never, um, because you'd have to have a lot of time to use all of that, and you just you have to understand how much different medical equipment it is. It's just bizarre. But the thing is, is that you have a pack rat usually with everything. So he's a pack rat with just equipment in general. And some people in development, they're a pack rat with code, right? So it's like, well, I have this code just in case, which to my philosophy, that's what GitHub is for. You just kind of go put it on there and you can always go back and access it. You don't roll it out into production. And the reason why I say that is because when you bring on junior developers or developers who are new, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, hey, uh, do we use this? And junior developers don't always know that they can go find the you know, sys job history table and look and see if it's ever been run. And then even if they do, they get very confused as to why do we have a job in production that's not being used. And it may be just one of those if just in case jobs, but ultimately that should be a script that should be on GitHub or that should be in a local source control that shouldn't be running in production or in production if it's not even being used. That's my viewpoint. It keeps environments clean. Anything in production should be used. Um, anything that is not used should not be in production. It should be saved somewhere. And especially with GitHub nowadays, um, companies can put code and um, on GitHub and then access it later if they need to use it. So this script, by the way, is on uh, GitHub. And you can see it's under SQL Server, Admin Tools, Cleaning, Unused Jobs, uh, PS1. And the other part of this code that I have, and I'll copy and paste this just to show you, is that I have it to where you could also, if you don't want to use a function, you can also do a loop here. Now this is not a function, but this is the same type of logic, except the difference here is that we're going to loop through multiple servers. So, and this is the syntax here. For those of you who are sticking around on the video, you got to see a bonus as well. Okay, so server three, instance three. So let's suppose I have three servers. By the way, you can see how easy it would be to loop through uh, 225 servers. So I have three servers, right? It's going to be for each server here in this array. And for each of those servers, it's going to go to the job and it's going to write host the server name. And this is what's key. Now we're going to write the server and we're going to write um, uh, the job name. And so basically now I can 
And by the way, I could take this another step further. I could get rid of this and just write this to a file, whether that's Excel or text or you name it. And so I can loop through, you know, in this case, three servers, find all the unused jobs on those three servers. Uh, so uh, that's a way in which you can um, do multiple servers at a time. By the way, as a note, if you like fork the code, you can actually change it or edit it to um, your customization. And in general, one thing I will mention for my subscribers and also for people who uh, do follow me on GitHub, in the long run, a lot of these scripts, uh, what's coming, I intend to, I'm not going to use GitHub in the long run. So if you guys know of anything that followers can see the code but non-followers can't, and the reason is because I think there should be kind of like subscribers. There should be a reward for people who are subscribers or followers. Like they can see something people who are non-followers or non-subscribers cannot see it. Um, and one of the strange things about both YouTube and GitHub is they don't have, to my knowledge, they don't have it to where non-followers and non-subscribers can't see. So I'm looking for a channel and I'm looking for a uh, source control. So if you all know of anything... Uh, post it in the comments or shoot me an email. My email is under my about page, but in the long run, that's where uh, things are going to go. And I'll let you know when it changes where you can go to get the code.